So I'm in a room and I'm the editor on Land Before Time and behind me are all these people who want to go ahead and run a session and they want me to edit. So in, this, in the back of me is my bosses, Don Bluth, Gary Goldman. So they were, uh, they made films, American Tale, Land Before Time, All Dogs Go to Heaven and whatnot. Um, and so they're, they're back behind me and a, a guy named Frank Marshall. I don't know if you know who Frank Marshall is. He's a producer, Six Sense, all the Indiana Jones. And Kathy Kennedy, who is now the head of Lucasfilm, and she was in Amblin back then. And then two lesser known guys, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk in, and I'm used back then, we cut on this stuff called film, right? <laughs> so I walk in, and there is a machine. We had these upright sheet machines called moviolas. And then we had other room, uh, machines, they were called flatbeds. There's a Steenbeck and a Chem. Steenbeck, I know, like the back of my hand. I can go ahead and work that all day long. Chem, I didn't quite know. So I walk into the room, and the editing system is a Chem. And I go, oh, crap. <laughs> and inside my mind, I'm going, OK, OK. I have worked this before, so I start to lace it up, whatever. Meanwhile, Stephen, George, and Don, Kathy are all talking behind me. And I'm releasing it up like that, and I'm getting ready, and I'm just really, really nervous. And then I go ahead and I go, OK, I think we're ready here. And I sit down, and I hit you know, forward, and it goes And it just, the film goes everywhere. And I'm going, I start to panic inside. And I'm thinking, and there's a guy who is my assistant. His name is Colin Wilson, actually. he's very, very big producer now. Uh, and I think, OK, at that moment, I had a choice to make. I either s go ahead and try again and screw up again, maybe, or I tell Colin to go ahead and take over for me. And so I said, Colin, listen, this is a chem. I don't know a chem. I know a steam deck. Just take over and edit for me. And I get out, and I slink <laughs> over, and I sit in my little chair. And the rest of the session, I just felt I screwed up. Although I didn't use the word screw up. Um, <laughs> but I just felt I screwed up. This is it. My, my life, my career is in a shambles. Um, these guys, bigwigs in the industry, they're all going to go ahead and they're going to go home and talk about me. <laughs> and for the rest of the session, I was kind of silent. And then Colin did the whole, all the editing. And I spent that weekend and pretty much the rest of the week, up to Thursday, thinking about how I screwed up, how I failed. And until um, Thursday walks around, I'm in my room. I'm cutting the sound effects because we're we're on we're going to the dubbing stage to go ahead and mix, and I hear, <laughs> and I walk the door and Steven's there and he goes, hey Dan, um, I got an idea. I want to go ahead and cut, make a trim, and an edit on reel seven, which was the one with the T-Rex sharp tooth, uh, and I go, yeah, yeah, okay, and there's my Steenbeck, which I know <laughs> like the back of my hand. So I get on there. I thread it up, and we sit there, and we had about um, an hour and a half session just editing away with Steven Spielberg. <laughs> uh, and it was like nothing. And I realized, and I carry that to this day, that what I thought was his perception of me, and what I carried in my mind, that I failed, that that was all they were ever thinking, that they were thinking. And it didn't mean, it didn't mean anything. It didn't amount to anything. I was basically, they were probably back there talking about Indiana Jones, which they were shooting, the second one they were shooting at that time. And, uh, and I realized I built this up in my head. I actually made myself more important than I really was. And that I thought that what I did at that moment ruined the rest of my career. And it was nothing. 
and I'm saying this, and I'm going to loop this around back to the, to the end as well, but you learn more from your, I know you've heard this probably, but you learn more from your failures in your career than you do your successes. Because those fail, failures define who you are. They define your work ethics. They set you back on the right course. And um, they're very, very powerful. So when you are in whatever career and someone corrects you, someone criticizes your work, take it with a grain of salt. Because it is a course correction. Hopefully it's the right criticism, it's the right correction. But learn from it. You can put a fence up and you can go, idiot, and walk away. Or you can go, okay, all right. Okay, I'll, I'll take this and I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll use it uh, as a learning tool.